my case, this one is also. So I divided into four part, okay? Two are in right and two are in left. So if you start with the right part, then on my window, you can see uh, the top one is basically a script window where you can see lecture one dot RMD. Uh, the below one is the console window. So our console, uh, basically the, uh, can say the console monitor of R uh, only. And since R studio is a, uh, when you provide a integrated environment, so because of that region we are having here R and other features of R studio. So the top panel, the left top point panel is basically called a script window. So, uh, so, and the below one is the console. So when I say script mean, so if you go onto the file and then new file, then you, file, and then you find a various script like R script, R notebook, R markdown, signy and so on. So actually when we work with R, uh, either we can work with the R script or R notebook. So I prefer, to work with the R notebook and the, the window that you can see, okay, or you can, or I say the script that you can see, that one is the R notebook. So if I open a R script for you, this, so R script now has opened, okay, and you can see a black blank script. So R script is a similar to a text file. So, you, uh, so when you work with R, we, type all our input in a script file, either in R script or notebook file. I like suppose that if I tell you, if I want to do a particular cal calculation, we got three plus two bean, and if I enter, I do not get anything, but if I select this one and run this script, then in the console window, which we call here the output window, I'm getting the result. That one is five. So, when I am introducing you to the script window, so I mean, I mean to say either we can uh, work with the R script or notebook, R notebook. So in R script work as like, uh, and we do entry in, our, in a textbook file. So first we need to make, uh, need to give our inputs and after giving that inputs, we require to run that file and we'll get the results of, the input that you provide in R script. And notebook work a bit differently. So I, I, I will come to you and come to that. But let's uh, familiarize ourselves to the other window, which are the environment window, and the right top and the right below that we can say the uh, basically the home window where we can find the files, plot, package edge, in the help also be part of that and several other tab are there. So environment into basically list all your data and results that come as a object or vector. So, uh, so you may surprise keep initially when we type three plus two, so result could be and a result is five that that five result is not coming in an environment window but that is coming in a console window it's of course because five is a result but we haven't assigned and the object name to that result and because of that reason that is not coming to the environment window so i'm saying if when we assign a, a object name to our results then that become a part of the environment window. Similarly, all the data set that we, uh, uh, we import on the R or in our data frame, that would become a part of the environment window. And adjacent to environment, we find a history tab. So all the input that we give become a part of the history. So. So we can clear history by clicking on this group uh, icon. Yeah. And the file I, I have already told to you. So, so 
uh, list uh, uh, work a bit with the R script and then after you move on to the R notebook. So as I told you, okay, uh, we can give input uh, as we write on the uh, test root file. So as, as I'm writing three plus two, you are getting a result five. And, um, and one, mo uh, one more important thing, when we work with R, okay, and we need to uh, conceptualize ourselves uh, to the object and vectors, because that is the term that uh, and, uh, and, uh, and we use. And, and as a user, you hardly use, but whenever you refer any test book, any notebook, or any uh, um, in, any manuals, okay, uh, then that those test book or those documents use this term very frequently. And believe me, it is not difficult to understand what uh, do I mean object and what uh, we mean by vectors. So as I told you, 3 plus 2 is a simple calculation, simple arithmetic calculation. So 3 plus 2, that we know equal to 5. Okay, and the same results that are appearing in a console window. So when we assign a name to this uh, result, okay, let's suppose that if I say this one is x, okay. So, uh, and when we assign a, a name to our entry or to our object, to our result, okay. Basically, this one is the entry, when our the result result is five. So when you assign a name to our entries, okay, uh, uh, then that name become an object. So X is here the object, okay. And for getting X as an object, you are uh, after X we require to place this one less than minus sign. So X less than minus sign three plus two. And after assigning an object, if I run this script, then I do not get anything in a console window, sorry, any result in a console window. What I am getting, I'm just getting the entry. So these are the my inputs, x less than three plus two. Okay. Earlier, when, when I type three plus two, so in a console window, I'm getting the entry and I'm getting the output also. So the three plus two is in my input, you can see, and five is our output, or you may say three plus two is the entry, and this one is the result. But when we when we assign the object to our entry or our inputs, I'm not getting the result. Okay. Instead, X I am getting on a environment, and that's why I'm told you the environment includes all objects name, okay, all uh, data files, okay, and many more things. Okay? So now X, since we assigned a, uh, X as objects, so that become a part of the uh, uh, R environment. Uh, since, and along with this, you can, you can also see three plus two equal to five. Similarly, all kind of arithmetic calculation we can do with the R. So either you can enter those, uh, those uh, calculation to the R script or directly enter into the concept. So when we use R as a calculator, remember when you use R as a calculator, then all kind of calculation we directly do making entry in a console window. So like as I said, okay, three plus two equal to five, the same result we can also obtain by making entry into the console window. Okay, so, so remember, uh, look here, three plus two, and if I enter, I get five. Okay, if I, if I want to get some other, calculation like three multiplied by three, okay, and I enter, I get nine. Similarly, if I, even I do some random calculation, two, three, four, five multiplied by five, sorry, four multiplied by 23, and if I enter, I get the result, okay? So I mean to say when we use R as a calculator, then we directly work with the console because you have, there's no need to waste our time for opening our script or our notebook file and then work with it. Uh, but of course, when you want to keep the results of your input, uh, 
uh, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, when you want to keep the records of your input, then in that case, you have to open the, either the R script or R notebook, right, to work with that, okay? And, and, and that we do when we do a complex calculation, because many times even we, uh, we need to do a complex calculations, okay? So for that, we open the R script or R, R notebook file and we work with that, okay? And all arithmetic uh, operators, um, I think many of you are already familiar, plus we know it's a one arithmetic operator minus for multiplication, you can use a star, division, you can use slash, Okay, um, less than uh, equal to that equal to is same as equal to. So these are the sum of the arithmetic operator. Okay, uh, when I refer some reference reading on the app, there you find detail of all arithmetic operator, and also you find a lot of examples uh, relating with the, the uh, such type of calculation. So. Uh, so two thing we we'll, uh, we learned here. First one is uh, learned here. First one is uh, regarding the uh, object, and the second one you can check. We can use R as a uh, calculator also. So any doubt till now? No, sir. Okay. Anybody? No, sir. So far good. Yes. So let's do uh, some more algebraic calculation. So remember in, in the first, let me delete this one. So I, uh, uh, I assigned a object name to three plus two. So X is basically three plus two. So the result of this part, the simple calculation is five that we do. Let's suppose that if you want to do another calculation where you are going to use the X object. So remember x object is not 3 plus 2. Okay. 3 plus 2 it can say our calculation. Okay. And we assigned uh, name to that. That one is the x. So actually x representing a result. Okay. So if, if I want to calculate another let's suppose that y equal to x to the power 3. Okay. So for power you use this particular notation. Okay. So, and if I enter, okay, of course I do not get immediately, I have to run this script, okay. So I select this particular entry, y equal to x to the power three, and if I run, I get y, that one is 125, okay. So uh, uh, note here, if when you are, I'm assigning the object name above, I'm using this particular notation, less than minus and in a below I just use equal to okay so that means we can assign the object uh, and, uh, and you can assign this objects okay uh, by using both of these two notation less than minus and equal to okay but uh, for various other regions, okay, and it would be better to use uh, less than minus notation for assigning objects. Okay, so so x is an object name, you can see. So so even if I make a entry something like that, y and then I am saying y equal to x to the power two. Instead of taking x to the power 3, I'm going to use x to the power 2. And when I select this one and run this script, look, now result is 25. And the object uh, uh, name y, which was earlier 25, OK? So that replaced by 20, sorry. Earlier one is, uh, which is the thing. Uh, 
sorry sorry for my confusion so earlier one was the 125 so 5 to the power 3 and now when i'm modifying our objects okay and modifying our entry and assigning the same object name basically then the entry replaced with the 25 that means if you assign a same object name then your earlier uh, and results replaced by the newer one so basically it overrides the uh, old results so, so that uh, one is the second lesson so whenever you are assigning a name to your object assign the name carefully because if you do a mistake then your older uh, any calculations will be overwritten okay. uh, so so that the third one Now let's move on to the notebook file. So this, the, so as I see, we can work with the R script also, but but again, I feel myself more convenient with the R notebook file instead of working with the R script. Though I, when I started learning, uh, and that was not uh, too bad. Okay, I started uh, working with R this year only, I think. Not this year, last year. Okay, so I think first time when I work with uh, with the R, that one is in two thousand twenty one. Um, sometimes in a September. Okay, uh, after when I recovered from the COVID, and so 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 as I uh, I telling you when I started working with the R, initially I worked with the R, but when later when I got to introduce with the uh, with the uh, notebook, I found notebook is more convenient than R. Okay, so now I am requesting you everybody to open R notebook and for opening the R notebook, again we go on to the file. Okay, and then you click on the R notebook here. Okay, probably now we have to require an internet connection for getting this R notebook file. file. So, so if you require to install a particular package, let's say that package name is R markdown. See, uh, so if, if you are getting message to import that particular package, sorry, install that particular package, then you, you install that particular package first. So I'm talking about R notebook, go on to the file, then, and then, uh, new file and click on to the R notebook. So as you click on to the R notebook, a new tab opens, okay, with an icon RMD. So this one is the R notebook. Why can we also get this uh, much text? And this this one, this text automatically comes when we open R note, sorry, R notebook file. Are you getting those? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes. So has everybody opened? Yes, sir. Yes. <clears throat> now you do one thing, okay? First, read this text, okay? And read particularly this one, okay? Because so if I say okay, this, this we call chunk, okay? So the plot car is written here, okay, and it's it's coming on uh, within a particular box. So this the whole box we uh, we call in our language as a chunk, okay. And when we work with the R uh, R notebook file, we're supposed to um, get this chunk every time when we need to enter our inputs or command part or you can say codes to the r notebook file so and we so and when we enter our codes within the r and uh, within the chunk we after then we require to run that chunk okay so 
And how do I insert that chunk? For inserting the chunk, since I'm using a MacBook, so I have to click onto the command, then uh, many option plus I. So, so Simon. So simultaneously, I have to press all these buttons to get a chunk inserted to our notebook file. Okay. For window, probably there is a, a different way for getting the chunk. It might be control plus uh, shift plus I, whatever, but you are getting that shortcut when you open the R notebook file. Okay. And remember, as an example, these plots car are given in this chunk, uh, in this example chunk. So if I run this chunk, and for running this chunk, we need to click on this arrow. So if I run this chunk, then my chunk is running and we'll get this particular graph. And we get the graph below our chunk. Okay. So if you open uh, and note down how you enter the chunk, then I request you to delete. So excluding the, the stuff, which are within the desk, like title, art notebook, output, HTML notebook, I'm advising you to delete rest of the part. And we know how to delete. We need to select and enter, select and press delete button. So, so delete all this, okay. So have you done? Yes, sir. Yeah, now insert a new chunk. So inserting a new chunk, in case of MacBook, it is command, option, and I. For Windows, control, alt, and I. Uh -huh. Control, alt, and I, so everybody do that. When I'm writing down. Then, sir. So, Control Alt plus I, right? So, for window. So, so I've entered this chunk, okay? And now repeat the same thing uh, that we have done with the R script. So if now re remember, if I simply write three plus two, okay. Then after making entry of three plus two, I need to run this chunk. When we were working with the R script, for that also, we need to select that particular uh, quotes, a particular entry and required to run. The similar thing we do, we are doing here also, but we are not going to select, okay? Since this particular entries are within the chunk, so we require to run that chunk. And as I run that chunk, I'm getting the result immediately below that. Immediately below that. Okay. Similarly, if I insert another chunk, or if I insert another chunk, and if I assign a name to this object, now you can assign J, or maybe you say X, same, same one, so three plus two, okay? And if I run this chunk, I'm not getting anything below. Why? Uh, because I have assigned a object to the, our entry. So again, as, a, as X is an object, so that will be listed in a, environment window. Okay. Okay. So, the, so the lesson is here, okay, for working with the notebook file, we need to insert chunk every time. Okay. And if your codes are without the objects, then we get the output immediately below the chunk. If that is with the objects, then of course, uh, uh, any, any, object will be listed in a environment. Okay. 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 So, okay, so, so we can say that 
and if, these are the some major difference between uh, R script and R notebook book file. Of course, R notebook uh, R notebook gives you more options, many more options than the R script, and probably that we'll learn later. Okay, so. So now let's uh, uh, move on to uh, working directory. So remember, whenever you work with any software, not only with the Stata, but even when you work with the R, SPSS, or any software, uh, we need to assign a particular folder as a working directory, or you have to make that particular folder as a working directory. Okay. Sir, I have a question i have a query yeah yes sir. Uh, uh, sir actually uh, when i am using I the know. command uh, control l plus i mm -hmm. so this chunk is opening but i am not getting a uh, sign of like this green sign now for to run like three plus two and then run uh, i don't know why open a new notebook file okay uh, close that one open a okay. new and mm -hmm. when you Deleting these stuffs, okay. Mm -hmm. Keep this these stuffs there, which are okay, coming okay, okay. between dash. Do not all right, all right, all right. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, okay. Let's move on to. So when we work with any software, we need to make. Uh, I mean, we need to make a particular folder as a working directory, and there are several advantage of making that folder as a working directory. Uh, so let's suppose that I'm creating a one folder on the desktop and I'm using naming that as a R. So everybody of you create a folder and name to that folder, whatever you want to name. So I'm I'm naming that as a R. Okay. So this folder, which one is the empty now, become an I mean, uh, and that is going to become a working directory. Okay. And the one advantage, uh, of course, when we work with the any data set, uh, okay, uh, we keep that data set in a particular folder. Okay. Uh, when you import that data set onto any software and then we save the uh, uh, data frame, okay, or we can save the data which one is converted to that particular software you want to save uh, into this, into that folder only, okay, or into a single folder, or, or if, if better if you want to, when you work with the data at a one time, at a particular, uh, a particular time you want to keep all our stops into a single folder so that we can easily assess the assess those stops just by clicking on that folder and that one is the basically the feature of the in for um, uh, any folder okay or feature of the folder okay so the same thing we do here okay so we we create a folder and and we keep our all stops okay and they are okay and after then, we make that folder as a working directory. Uh, so that we can easily access to that folder using um, um, the software. Okay. So, If in case if you do not make that folder as a uh, working directory, okay, then for every time when you want to assess the uh, stops of that folder, we need to, need to assign a path of that folder, okay. So it's not that okay, we, without making that folder as a working directory, we can't work with the software or assess the file of the folder. Of course, we can assess the file of that folder, but for that, we need to assign path every time so just to save our uh, yeah, time okay uh, we make a particular folder as a working directory so the same you do here uh, we uh, 
uh, we are going to make the folder that we have created just now uh, as our working directory. So before any making that folder as a working directory, what we do, we check uh, first what each current working directory. Okay. And for checking current working directory with R, it, it we type this command get wd and then this bracket. Get is a get working directory. Okay. In a stata, there is a command pwd, present working directory. Okay. So sometimes, of course, all the software automatically make a particular folder, folder as a current working directory. As in the, the software generally make a folder as a default working directory in which the software itself installed to. So, uh, so it depends upon different uh, software to software. What is the default working directory? But we need to make a particular folder as a working directory. So first, what we do first, but we check our current working directory. Okay. So for checking the current working directory, this one is the command. Okay. Get working directory. So we insert a chunk, and within that chunk, okay, we type get working directory. And if I run this chunk, so remember, so look here, my current working directory is R underscore SDS folder. Okay. So R underscore SDS folder, which probably is in Krishna. Uh, Krishna, basically, it is a, my username. So users Krishna. So within a users folder, there is a folder named by Krishna. And within that, there is one doc, one folder R SDS which one is the current working directory. And this one is the, are taking this one as a default because it, the lecture one, which I prepared for today, okay. And basically that I updated that one for today. This lecture one notebook file, I initially I was prepared when I was taking a lecture with a development studies students at Ambedkar University, Delhi. So, so at that time I, I created this folder R underscore SDS. Okay. So so that is my default working directory as of now. But as I told you, it required to uh, change our current working directory. And that we do for all software. Okay. Okay. For each uh, ease of convenience, because that that makes our task easier. So uh, so get working directory is for getting a current working directory. So has everybody done? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, so now we are going to change our working directory. Okay. And for changing working directory, Again, we insert our new, our new chunk. And the code for changing working directory is set working directory. Okay. And once we set our working directory under code, we assign path to the folder that we want to make as a working directory. So remember, I have created a folder R. You find out the path of that folder. So in MacBook, you just need to copy that folder. Okay. For window, when you click onto that folder on top, you, uh, uh, we get a URL. And if you click onto that URL, uh, you get the path. So, okay, I do. So if you click, so, so you need required to get the path of that folder. And once you have that path, okay, you need to enter those path here. Sorry. Okay. Okay. 
Just copy that one. I copy this one. This work. And go onto the R. And then paste it. It's not working. Okay. Why not? I don't know why this time it is not working. But remember, mm -hmm. uh, so this one is a desktop. And in desktop, I, I've create, just created a folder that we called R. Okay. So so for me it is users then krishna then desktop desktop and then it is R. Let's check whether this working or not. It's working. Okay. So if I check my current working directory after making this change, the so get working directory. So now it is R folder. Yeah, it's working. So we need to assign the path. Okay. Has everybody done? Yes, sir. And once you're done, after then you again we insert a new chunk and check whether you have done the things correctly or not. Okay. Or whether the folder desired folder become current working directory or not. So now our folder become has become our current working directory. Okay, now we, we install uh, a particular package that we call tidyverse, okay? So in my computer, it has already been installed. For installing the, uh, uh, and installing any packages, we require to type this code, install packages, okay? So as you initiate this code, write few line, install, we start getting, any options to so click the uh, onto the first one install packages and again within the code we we require to type the name uh, sorry name of the package so the i'm uh, so i'm telling you to install tidyverse package okay So again, we need to run this chunk. So when you run this chunk, it takes some time depending upon your uh, internet speed. There's a 415 KB file. This much, I mean, I mean, this size of file, then you download it in, within a minute. Okay, hardly take more than a minute. So install package tidyverse, okay? You may ask why tidyverse. So, so in a one sentence, if I say that tidyverse uh, makes learning R easier. Okay, so it's a, you can say it's a particular kind of language of R. And since when tidyverse has come, okay? It's a modern language, okay? Since then, learning R become easy. Otherwise, learning R was difficult. At least I say this uh, uh, on my own experience, okay? Because when I was MA students or PhD students, okay, at that time, learning was, was really difficult. Okay. But due to development of uh, modern languages, or you can say the several packages, okay, are not only become uh, learn, not only learning are become easier, but also uh, we can work with many things using R. So it's it's become more versatile, more dynamic over the year. 
and now in this day are considered as one of the best language of programming. Okay. Of course, the new programming language has come after that. They're called, we call Python, Julia, and several others, but still R is a powerful language. You can do millions of things using R. So, uh, install this particular package tidyverse. So, has everybody installed? Yes, sir. Well, now you are going uh, going to type all those codes. Actually, those are the parts of tidyverse. So, after installing, you call this package so that that uh, package become a part of our current working environment. And we call any package using library. So you, you, you know the usage of library. So library we use for the consultation purpose. The same use we are going to uh, do here. So, so we are, we, whenever we work with any, uh, any we work with the course, okay. Uh, that code uh, basically a family of a particular library and we require to call the family first so that key we can work with the member of the family better like i say so if you want to consult any book we have to go to the library okay then we pick that book then we consult that book so similarly uh, in a similar language we can understand what this library mean here so it, every time we we need to call a particular library which will work with some specific codes. Okay. So, so call library, library tidyverse, uh, and you run this particular chunk. And when we run this chunk, so we get uh, uh, several informations below to the chunk. Because we, we know okay, with our notebook, we get the result below the chunk only the same you are getting here. So, uh, and the tidy verse basically, uh, uh, and it's a, what I say, uh, it's, it's a group of several packages you can see. So, uh, like table, tidy R, read R, DP, LYR, stringer, forecast, these are the all, basically the packages which are part of tidyverse now. So these are the separate packages, ggplot is separate library, table is a separate library, tidy R is uh, separate library. So now it's the all library uh, become a part of the larger library, which we call the tidyverse, okay? So tidyverse 1.3.4. So, so uh, we call the library uh, tidyverse first and after calling the library, I'm going to import a data because ultimately we as a data analyst, data scientist, or uh, we work with the data. Okay. So uh, as of now, I'm going not going to import any external data because most of the time or only the hundred percent of the time you accept when we log any particular software, we work with the how we work with our own data, and that one is the basically mainly the ex our ex external data. So, so, so one percent is if I say ninety nine percent of the time you work with the external data. Okay, so so later we work with the external data also. Okay, so just to save our time or uh, let's work with the data that already comes with the tidyverse package. And for that, I'm going to import a particular data that called a MPG data file. So type MPG, okay. And when we run the MPG, immediate below you get a snapshot of that data. Okay, so it, it, it's, it's a table format and so it's, Let's get 224 into 11. Let's get 11 variable and 234 observation. And how much observation is currently showing? Showing a 1 to 10 of 234 rows. 
and is showing only five variables. Okay. Okay. For getting this data as a data frame, because still it is not in a data frame, because as it is in a data of data frame, it become a part of the environment. To get this data as a data frame, we type data and then we type the data file name, which one is the MPG. So insert a new chunk and type data MPG. Under bracket, you type data MPG. And run this chunk. We may delete the R environment. Okay. So for deleting uh, the all file from the R environment, we require to click onto this broom window. As you click onto the broom, everything will get deleted. Okay. Later, I will tell you how to do a selection deletion. But as of now, since nothing are for our use, we can delete all those files. Okay. So now you can import this data MPG. Has everybody done? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come out here. What about the others? Yes, yes sir. sir. Yeah, that's okay. So data MPG and run this chunk. So as you run this chunk, now we get an entry in, in your R environment. And remember this particular data is in uh, basically uh, in a data frame. Now onward, if you click onto this MPG, now we are not getting anything here, okay? But as you click onto this M MPG, okay? Okay, it's converted to such uh, for it. And if I click again a double click, then we get the entire data in a script window, MPG. Okay, so look here, it has manufacture model display and our variables and enrich against the variable. So all the data uh, which are in data frame basically initially looks like this. So this icon is video icon, all the videos having a such kind of icon, okay, and MPG, okay, so. Okay. And if you want to know more about this particular data, what this MPG data, then we need to go onto the help, type here MPG, okay, because where you are going using MPG data and enter. And we get the data. So it's a fuel economy data from 99 to 2008. For 38 popular models of car. Okay, so I don't know how many of you have used auto data of his data. Since Sarah told me case it did not work with any software. Ravinder and of course Ivani work with his data, but I don't know about the other. Those who have having experience of working with the data, probably they have worked with one particular data file that we call auto data, automobiles data. So that auto data and this MPG data are basically same. Okay. So what it has, it has a manufacturer name, then model name, then displacement ratio, then air, then number of cylinder, number of transmission, see all basically the features of car. And it also has price of the car. Has, no, sorry, this particular data set has not, uh, not has price of the car, but the auto data set has the information of price also. Well, anyway, but we are using the MPG data. So let's talk about this data set only. So as I was telling you, you can get the description of the data set by going on to the help okay, and then searching MPG data. So, so, so now we have a description of the MPG data. Let's close this one, okay? Close this one on title three also. I'm closing this one is skipped file also. Okay, let's skip this one. Probably I will use it later, okay? So untitled to uh, notebook file. So data MPG, so now we have a data. Has everyone got the data? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, another way of viewing this particular data, you will need to type this particular code view and then MPG. And when we run this one, again, we get uh, the, and you can view your data. So one way was viewing this data, when you are having a data with a, this particular video icon, sorry, I'm seeing that video, it looks like to me only. So I'm check, if 
just by clicking onto that, you get, uh, you can view your data. Otherwise, you can view MPG. Many of the data set that is still in a data print, but you can't view those data. But so for that, you, you need to enter this particular view MPG. Anyway, let's move further. So again, enter your new, new chunk, okay? And uh, now you have a data in our data frame. So you can save this data into R format or into R data format, okay? And for saving this data, okay? Uh, again, I'm saying it, unless or until you work with the really large data file that required, uh, uh, any, any, uh, that required a lot of time uh, in opening, uh, uh, then you can save that uh, data file. But again, the, my experience and it suggests making, we hardly need to save our data. Uh, data. Of course, that in the beginning you can save, but later we avoid saving our data set. Because with the larger data set file, if that's saved in R format unnecessarily, that takes lots of space of your computer. And also it takes a, a bit time for opening that data set. Particularly this R data format. Of course, there are several other data format also uh, that we, uh, we can use when we work with the R instead of using the R data. So about those data format, I will tell you later. Okay, but as I told, uh, I'm telling you, when when you know about that, do those data format and work with the large data set, large means I mean very large data set, which are having around four source observations, okay. Then, uh, of course, we can't save those kind of data set in a R data format. With a small data set, um, uh, if you are modifying your data set, uh, then you can save. Okay, otherwise, um, again, uh, yeah, you can save this small data uh, data file just to have a record of that. But even though if you can't save and work in a R notebook file or with a R script file, whether you have all the procedure written, then uh, if you run. This part, if you run this particular notebook file, and remember, you can run this particular note file all together at a one time. I'm just going to tell you so that you can understand why I'm telling you. Generally, do not save our data into the R uh, data format. So first, let's learn how to save the data in a R data file. So for saving the R, uh, so I'm, that is also for not confusing you. Just remember, okay, for saving the data file into R. What I'm telling, type save, and under bracket, you type MPG. MPG is the data file name, uh, okay? The existing data file name. And then you type file, and under quote, you type name of the data that you want to give this data file. So if you want to name this as a, let's suppose that if you want to keep the same name MPG, then you keep that. Other if you want to save it in a, some different data and uh, uh, name, then you can name the data file accordingly. So our data is basically the extension. So I can say the format of our data, the mpg dot our data. And if I click onto this, the data of mpg has been saved in our working directory. So for look here. So this one is my R folder and here you can see the data, data, MPG, R data. Okay. Uh, now I advise you to save the R notebook also, this particular notebook. So which one is the untitled two in my case? So if I, uh, and for saving this R notebook, you need to click onto this icon, save icon. So save this one, it's, and this save it is at, uh, let's suppose the class one, and save this one. And if you go to the directory folder, you can find a one, I need two more into, one is the HTML format, and one is the MPG, uh, sorry, class one, RMD. And now I'm going to tell you to close this R. So do not bother about, just close this R. Sir. Yeah. 
So can you please tell one more time the save? Look here. Save it in here. Okay. So, you know, so this one is the same. Save, save, save MPG file. So this this one is for saving the data. And I am telling you to close this file, all the file, not not only one. So I'm I'm going to close this data, the entire data, without saving, bothering about whether I have saved uh, things or not. Of course, you require to save this uh, uh, notebook file. And one more thing, we remember: okay, every time when we run, okay, I think it's automatically saved. Okay. But even though as I saved this, no, you, did, you need to save this one. Uh, okay. So some Python programming uh, uh, are overlapping. So uh, in Python case, when every time when we run, uh, run our script, that automatically saved. That's not with the R. So, and so indeed, I'm working with the Python also. So making me confused. So I, I'm, I'm telling you to close all these. So I, I have closed R. Okay, you can also close R. Do not bother about for losing your stuff, just close R. Okay, and now you can again open R. So if you open your R, look here, as I open, I got all the files. Okay, all the notebook file, but, but I haven't got any data here. Look here, we have created the MPG data. So now I'm going to tell you go into the uh, no, class one RMD file, okay, and go into this one run, which are on top. The run run button is on the top. One run button is for running the chunk. The other one is on the top, which are on the running the all the chunk, and here you get. Uh, get an option, run selected line, run chunk current, run chunk next, run chunk, run set of chunk and so on. Run all the chunk above, run, run all the chunk below. So since we are on the top, so run all the chunk below. So click onto this one, run all the chunk below. And as I, uh, saying, yeah, MPG. Okay, click onto the here and run all the chunk below. And look, look here, my chunk are running. And within a within a minute, I I got all the result that we have uh, generated earlier. Okay, so so everything that we have done, we got within a minute. Okay. So that that the, you can say the beauty of the R. Okay? We do not need to worry about losing your uh, 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 data or even the modified data. Because once that become a part of, once you have your original data, do not lose that your original data. And even though you modified that data later, okay, you don't need to bother about that. Of course, if you want to save that data in the R data format or in other data format, you can do that. Okay. Otherwise, once you have that notebook file, you will just need to run that notebook file again and you get everything. Okay. Okay. But as of now, save the data in our data format okay. so that you cannot lose your hmm. modified data. So since we haven't modific done any modification to our data sheet, so all are here. Okay. Uh, so, okay. So that one is the one thing. Second one is we can also remove our objects from the environment window. And for removing object, the command or code is RM. RM is remove. And if I want to remove, let's suppose that X. And if I enter this one, let's say the X has gone. Similarly, I can remove MPG also. So all, all the environment stops. Okay which are either in a data frame or as a objects or as a list of vector that you can delete by using this remove uh, code. Okay. Okay. Since, 
since if you want to remove the mpg also i think after comma you type mpg and we can remove this one also so so since x has, we have already removed so that is not here now done yes sir okay uh, what next mm. okay since nothing is our environment okay now if you want to load our mpg data again which one is which we have saved in our uh, sorry saved in our data format okay so saving i told you that one in the cover cover for loading the data which are already saved in our format so for that we can use the load command sorry i was typing use because you use a use in case of this data so load load and then mpg so it's generally happen when somebody work with many software simultaneously so, so to my PhD student, currently I'm teaching this data. So, and to you are. So, load mpg uh, uh, dot r data. So, so, so I'm I'm loading the data, not from the tidyverse, but the data that I already saved in our current work directory. So, mpg data, and enter. Sorry, run this chunk. Okay. And now we got the data. Okay. So uh, we have loaded the data. Sometimes our data set contains many uh, uh, data files. So we require to check whether a particular data file uh, is in our directory folder or dot so of course one way one convenient way of checking click and open the folder and check okay but we can also check uh, through the r okay. so for that we type exist so and then we type the data file name and if you run this chunk then it say true that true means it is in working directory if you get a message false then that means that data set is, is not working directly. So that one is another uh, way. Now I'm, I'm, we are going to work with this data file. So MPG, as I said, is our data file. And um, you are going to work with that. So for working with a particular uh, 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 data file, okay. So since at present we are having only one data file, so we work uh, uh, I mean, we attach that data, this particular data to the our working directory. So and that one is the attach, attach MPG. This attach uh, could become important because with R, we can work with the multiple data files simultaneously. The same is not possible with the any other software. That means with this data, we can't work with the multiple data files simultaneously. Okay. Same with the eView. I do not know about the SPSS. And for Python, till now, I haven't worked with any data. Okay. So, so I don't know about the Python and other software, but this data and eView, with this data and eView, of course, we can't work with the multiple data file. And this, I think the same is true with the SPSS also. But with the R, we can work with the multiple data file. So I'll give you an example later. When you have, we have multiple data file in our R environment. So since at present, we are having a, only one environment. So to work with that, I'm attaching that data to our <coughs> working environment. And that means attaching to our data uh, to the R. Okay. And making this 
डेटा एज ए डेटा फाइल एज एज एन एक्टिव डेटा फाइल दैट मीन्स की अनलेस और अंटिल यू डू नॉट अटैच दिस डेटा फाइल वी कांट वर्क विद दी अनदर डेटा फाइल आई एम सेइंग कि वन वन वे ऑफ वर्किंग विद दिस पार्टिकुलर डेटा फाइल वी गो विदाउट अटैचिंग एंड इफ यू गो विदाउट अटैचिंग देन दैट मीन्स देन वी हैव ए फ्लेक्सिबिलिटी टू वर्क विद दी अदर डेटा फाइल इफ एजिस्ट हियर Simultaneously, but once you attach, that means we can bound to work with the only one single data file, as we bound in case of Stata and EBU. So, so let's work with first attaching this data. When we have a multiple data file, then I will also tell you to how to uh, work with the multiple data file simultaneously. Okay. Mean meanwhile, I will give you an example of uh, how to work with even without attaching your data. So, so. attach is for attaching the data and there is another command which we can use deattach for deattaching your data so if i use this particular command that means we have de i have detach our data and detach so do it detach detach ka spelling kya hota hai na d a t a c h showing invalid name or argument right. okay get him in It's error in detach MPG invalid argument. So check book. Had I run this one? Run this one first. Yeah, sorry, I didn't run this attach command. That's why the attach was not working. So now it, now it's work. So the attach and the attach are the two command for attaching and the attaching uh, the data set. So. So we have attached our data set. So now reattach again. Okay. And for attaching again, you do not need to insert new chunk. Okay. Of course, you can do as I am doing. But you can if you run the previous chunk, the data attach and do not run the deattach one. Okay. Okay. So I'm attaching the data again. Now we can work with the data. Okay. So if you first of all, if you want to know the names of the variable, then we have to type names mpg. And we get the all the variables name. Now let's know about the sequencing of uh, the variable name. Okay, so remember, look here. Uh, the numeric figure that we can see here, that one is a one four seven ten. So the first variable is manufacture variable, and the second one is the model. The third one is the displacement. The fourth one is air. The sixth one is cylinder, and so on. So we can read our sequencing of our variable and see the sequencing also matter in R. We can R give you a flexibility to work with the uh, sequence of the variable and also with the variable itself. So sometimes we do not need uh, bother to type the name of the variables. Once we know the sequence of that variable, I just need to type the sequence number. So once we type the sequence number, that means. Uh, we are considering that particular variable for our purpose just a minute just a minute say hello noise so I'm, i'm coming back
Okay, I'm back. So there are some children outside who are making noise. No problem, sir. It happens evening time. Okay. Uh, where I was? Uh, yes, you can sing of the variable. So, so, so you talked about those sequence, I think. So, okay. So, uh, now let's uh, get some summary. So, insert another chunk, and if you type summary of and then you type the data file name, summary mpg. Okay. And if you run this chunk, we, we, we get a, some summary statistics of all the variable. And in that, what you get for manufacturing, it's are getting the number of observation, which one is the scale length. And since it's a character variable, non-numeric variable, you can say it's in its data, you call non-numeric R, it become a character, character variable. So you are not getting any uh, other statistics here. Similarly with the model, but with the displacement, we are getting statistics mean, first quartile value, median, mean, third quartile, and uh, maximum value. So for all the numeric variable, we get the statistics. For non-numeric, <laughs> we do not get anything except uh, getting a message or getting information that that particular variable is a character variable. So this one is for the entire data set. We can also uh, get the summary statistics selectively. So let's suppose that I think DRV one is the one variable. Yeah, it's a character variable. So forget about that. Let's say HWY. So HWY is our numeric variable. If, if you type summary HWY, we get the summary mean first quartile value, median, and so on. Okay. Similarly, you can get the uh, more than two. So this one is a displacement variable. So if you get more than two summary statistics. Okay. What is summary? Why only one? Uh, DRV is basically the character variable HWI. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, even with this, I'm getting only one summary statistics, but why? Okay, I'll check this one later. Okay, so I am not getting the summary statistics of displacement variable. Okay, but I okay. So before speaking anything on this further, okay, let's uh, go without it. So you can also check the summary of one variable, uh, one particular variable. Now you deattach de your data. D attach, I'm the D attaching MPG variable. Everybody do D attach your variable. And as I D attach, okay, now MPG data is not part of data memory. It's still a part of data environment. Okay, but it is a not a part of not a part of data memory. And after this, if I try to get summary of MPG variable, sorry, not MPG, uh, displacement variable, uh, let's HWI, displacement is a variable, TISPL. Sorry for this. Um, um, I think 
I need to attach this data again and then and suppose to run this one. Okay. Okay. Sorry for this confusion. Some some query was uh, is going on in my mind. So I so deattach the data set. And after deattaching the data set, get the summary statistics of this displacement variable. And as I click onto this now, look here, it's saying that your object displacement not found. If I delete this one for you and check just for HWI, so look here, earlier when data was attached, we are getting the summary statistics of HWI. So here I'm getting the summary Sorry, I'm not getting because data data D attach. So when data attach, let's suppose if I attach again, attach, sorry, D attach. Hmm. So when I attach again and get the summary statistics of H W I am getting the summary, but H I D D attach the data, D attach the data. So if I D attach the data, and if I run this one, I do not get anything. So that's the deattaching and attaching become important because when I attached, I made that data as a part of the current work directory. So as let's write again here. So as I attach this data, if I attach this data again here, so attach the data so that so you people at least do not confuse. As I attach this data, then this particular data become part of this data memory. And if I run, I get the output. But if I deattach this data, that data is not a part of the memory. And if I run the same command, I, I do not get the, I do not get any data. Okay. Then the questions arises, how we'll get the summary of HWI, okay, without deattaching the data. Because remember earlier I told you, you can work with the multiple data files simultaneously using R. The same we can't do using Stata. Then, of course, when we attach, we can't work with more than one data file. But when we go without attachment, then R allows you, you uh, to work with the multiple data file. So for that, what we do, we assign a data file name here first. So if I say here, assign here MPG, and then I put this dollar sign, Okay, then basically I'm any command giving a command to this data ki use HY variable of MPG data and provide me a summary of HY variable of MPG data file. Okay, and if I, if I run this one, I get the output now. Similarly, if there is another data, okay, of that I want to get a uh, summary statistics or, or another variable which is a part of another data file, of that I want to get a summary statistics. Okay, similarly, calling that data file, putting a dollar sign, and then putting a variable name after that we can get the summary static. So later I'll give you an example also when we have a more data file uh, with us. So, so as of now, uh, now data uh, is not part of this data memory and we are getting the summary statistics, okay? Now let's have a some table make the table. So summary statistics we get using the summary. Uh, of course, it gives you a limited summary statistics. If you want to get more, like it, it, here you are not having a standard deviation uh, that we generally uh, need. So about those I tell you later, okay. So okay, how to get the standard deviations, okay. As of now, uh, we are going with these statistics only. Now let make table. So for making a table, okay, if your data set is not, no, sorry, data is not attached with uh, the R memory, then uh, 
uh, we need to uh, call the data file first and then after this dollar we need to assign the variable name so would be better again let's attach our data and then make a table so table and make a table of mpg okay sorry okay okay let d attach data again because you are having a same okay let's make a table of model and then model is our variable so call out names of mpg data again that help me for recalling those data so manufacture model displacement so Got this one paste here. So table model, look here, I attach the data. So data is a part of this data memory. So the model is a uh, quantitative, sorry, qualitative variable. And then I think which one air, air we also put air, model and air. So these are the two variables, and I want to get a table. So if I if you run this one. We get the table. So since there are only two year, year 1999 and 2008, and these are the model of the car. So we, so this basically this one is the frequency table. So we have gotten four two four two four two and so on. Okay. I think class one is the another uh, variable. So if if you go with this one class only. So instead of year, if you put a class, then we get a table as such like this. So you try to make some uh, table so, or at least a table using different variables. So table, model, class, model and class. So remember here the data is attached with the data memory or data is part of this data memory. That's why you are, you, we are able to make a table without assigning data file name. Okay, if you deattach our data, Let's suppose that if I deattach our data, again, if I go onto the top, it will be better. If I deattach the data, then I have to need a, and I have, I need to assign a data file name first. Because if I run this one, it, I do not get anything. It says that key object model not found. So in that case, we need to type MPG, then put a dollar sign here, and this one is again MPG, put a dollar sign here. MPG dollar class, MPG dollar model. And then again, we get the data. Okay. So remember when we work with the data file, in that case, you may attach your data. Otherwise, we require to call data file name first. When we are calling any particular variable of that data file. So this one is for making a table. Now I'm going to uh, plot some graphs. Okay. So the plotting for plotting the graph, uh, we use gg function. So gg plot function basically gg plot. I hope you all are doing along with me simultaneously. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, so GG plot is a function that we can use or, uh, or codes that we can use. And, and do not confuse between function and codes. Okay, later I tell you the difference between these two also. Okay, but GG plot. Uh, uh, we can use this ggplot, um, we, can, we can say, say, say as of now code we can use for making uh, graphs, okay. So what we do, type ggplot and then we call data. So data is our mpg data. Then we can add huge plus, okay, and then 
enter and then we call this geom function geom geom underscore point and under bracket we map our axis so mapping eas and x variable become displacement dis pl dis pl and y variable so on y axis we are uh, or we say variable x and y variable on x and y axis so we are basically we are mapping our axis so this way so gg plot we start with the gg plot so this one is basically a library package the gg plot uh, which is part of the tidyverse package so it's a call another package gg plot package then under bracket we type data file name data equal to mpg and then we are use this geom point function and then we map our x and y axis within uh, that function so so this become our code and if i run this chunk look here immediately below i get the graph okay if i copy this in this entire code from here and go on to the r script and enter so r script again you are having the same chunk and if i select this chunk and run where output i am getting i am getting the output okay under the slot tab the difference that you are getting in a notebook file i'm just i'm getting the output within the uh, with and getting the output below the chunk. But when I run the same script using, uh, sorry, same codes using the R script, I'm getting the output in a plot. Uh, and in an environment, sorry, in a window, a left bottom window, in a left bottom window under plot tab. And he, from here, you can export, save as a uh, image, save as a PDF, copy to cl clipboard and save somewhere. Okay, with the notebook, can we copy? Yeah, with the notebook, uh, if you, here you are getting a different icon. So if you click on this icon, it opened in a separate window. And from here, I think, uh, you can't copy this one. Okay, you can analyze, but you can't copy. What about this one? This one cross. So allow you to copy. Yes, this is again here. You can save this image and you can copy this image. So you can save this image in a PNG format. You can also copy and paste. Copy image and paste somewhere where you want to. The same, same feature. Okay. So So let's come back to the notebook. I hope you type these codes. If not, then everybody do this one quickly. Okay. So now look, this one is, uh, as of now, this one is uh, a black and white graph, okay? So if you want to assign a color to uh, this graph, okay? And, and let's suppose that if you are assigning a color by class, class is also a variable here. So if you, want to have a map which not only represent the displacement and h y variable but also this uh, display the class variable so what we do we assign we bring the class character of the uh, uh, car also and we give color to those character so color class okay so, 
And if I run this particular one, I just have it adding color equal to class to that graph. Okay, one way can I copy this entire one and run another chunk. Okay, since I'm not going to make any changes to the axis of that graph, so displacement and HY variable are there. I'm just adding a new character to the graph or new feature to the graph. Okay, that one is I'm going to uh, bring the color, uh, going to assign the color and that those color varies with the class of the car. Okay, so if I run that chunk, look here, now I'm having a color also within the graph and that color varies by class of the car. So in a class, what we are having two seater car, compact car, mid size car, minivan, pickup, subcompact, and SUV. Okay. And here you can see how the uh, how the color varies along with the HY and displacement variable. Okay. So, so that one is the other. If you want to You want to assign size to the class. If you run the size, uh, and instead of having a color, if you want to have a graph something like this, where you are having a uh, largest size for the SUV, uh, and a largest dot for the SUV, then we can go ahead with this. Okay. There are many other options also. There is one option of alpha. Okay. So if I if you go with that, your graph looks like this. A L oh, long is spelling A L P H Y. So it, it graph looks like this. Look here, it's, it's give you a different shape. We can also assign a shape and so on. So these are all these scatter graphs, but we are assigning a different. Uh, save size color to the class variable. Okay, so that's the thing. So, so you can make a many an a type of the graphs uh, using R, and R also known for uh, its graphs. So I I think any more dynamic uh, any graphs we can produce uh, using the R. This it's 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 a one of the great feature of the R. So that one is for the scattered graph. We can also have the line graph. Okay, and we also have the both line and uh, uh, the scattered graph together. So what my example I'm giving you, that one is again for the uh, same axis, so ggplot, so, so insert a new chunk, ggplot, and then data, mpg. And do not worry much about the graph. I think uh, the reference reading that I'm going to suggest to you for all these, that has a lot of example. And how to make a different type of the graph. Uh, also, when we do Google, then we get a lot of information regarding the graph. So we can map the CT. Using R. So this one is another code, ggplot data mpg. So again, ggplot function or library I'm using. G underscore is smooth function is called a function and this mapping x displacement y h i. Now I'm going to not taking and taking here the class variable. So if I run this one, taking look here, I'm getting a line graph. So shaded region one is the basically a, a, a 95% confidence interval. Okay, so 
So it's smooth, basically this is smooth for, uh, graph you, uh, we get when we, it's provided with a non-linear graph. So mainly when you work with the non-linear uh, uh, regression model or non-linear function, which is basically if I told you, so we try to uh, have and look at what kind of relations we are having or two variables. It's a non-linear, giving a non-linear relationship. So for that, we are using a, this is both, okay. So this one is the smooth. We can also have the both uh, scattered and line graph together. So for that, nothing else. I have to bring the, this codes here. And if I copy the code here over here and paste here and delete this one. So if you look here, now we are uh, geom, geom is both. So now we are having a two geom function, geom point and geom is both together. Okay, and if I run this one, I get a graph where we are having both a uh, scattered graph and uh, line graph essentially. So, so this one is the Another example of the graph. Yes. You practice with this and then you tell me if you have any doubt. And when we run this one, such kind of message you get, but as, as of now, you do not bother about such kind of message. Okay. Ultimately, you are getting the graph that you wanted. So. Has everybody done it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, energy come away. Yes, sir. <laughs> no, I mean done it, yes, sir. <laughs> Yes, sir. Okay. So, so import our other data. And this data called a diamond data. Yes. But it's with what it deals with. Yeah, the diamond data. So this notebook file I have prepared for you only. So I'll share this file. So now load a diamond data. And for loading a diamond data, again, the codes are data diamond, okay? So if you load this data, so type data, and then under bracket, diamonds. And run that one. You get the diamond in your environment and if you click on to this, that comes as a part of the data frame. And now look here, the diamond is having a 53,940 observations with 10 variables. Okay. Earlier we are working, was working with the lower number of observations, the small sample size data, the large sample size data. Okay. We can use the view, uh, uh, view command for viewing the data that I'm not doing, but I'm going to uh, uh, make a bar graph for you. And this, this, these codes are for making that bar graph. So everybody type this one, ggplot, again, the library that we are using, data, diamonds, plus geom bar. So geom are having a many options. It, it was having a point option for giving you a point, uh, sorry, scattered graph. A smooth option for giving you a non-linear graph, okay? For uh, this bar option is give you the bar graph, okay? So bar and then you map your 
x is so here i am going to um, uh, using only one variable which one is the cut variable of diamond so if you name your if you want to get a name of your diamond data so if you type diamond okay and then you get these are the variable of the name so carrot cut color clarity depth table and you know okay uh, and a diamond these are the features of the diamonds okay and price of diamond vary uh, along with the carrot cut color okay so larger number of cut at, uh, and, gen and uh, have generally having a higher price so same with the carrot and uh, clarity okay uh, so so if I'm, uh, we are going to uh, use here only cut variable. So x is the cut variable. And when we run this one, we get a bar graph as like this. Okay, so basically this is a count. Okay, how, uh, so these are the basically, I think fair, good. These are the uh, uh, categories of cut variable. So fair, good, very good, premium. And, and height shows you the uh, count, basically the number of uh, premium cut diamonds similarly very good good cut diamond feared cut diamond and so on so there's a counter with mainly the number okay okay so uh, you can also make the similar graph using a stat count okay so gm and stat are interchangeable so with the, when you work with the tidy first mainly we work with the gm function stat count i do not know much about this but these are un, uh, interchangeable. Uh, you can also add the color. So X become a cut and you can assign a color to the cut. So when I run a variable, it's, it's some, coming something like this, okay? Uh, there is another type of the graph. Even you are unable to make it, let's leave that. Since it's already written here and I have taken this one just to show you some uh, more examples of uh, graphs so now here we fill uh, color to the cut of diamond so let's look here so it's now it, it has uh, colors also okay uh, similarly we can go ahead with the clarity we can make a very make a graph as such like this so here we have used a clarity variable and we fill color to that. So it's a color by clarity basically. And here it was color by cut. Okay. So that's the difference. That we need to understand. Uh, there is some more example where uh, we are uh, uh, filling and giving color to uh, by clarity. And also we are positioning our graph, something like this. So this graph here we are making a position doge. And this, so this one is different from this one. Okay, so this one is basically stacked with one, uh, stacked one over other. And here we having a uh, uh, one graph adjacent to the other. So, so, so those are the different type of uh, uh, graphs. Okay, now come on to the box plots. Okay, so box plot mainly uh, we uh, use when we need to identify. Uh, some extreme observations that we called outlier. Okay, so, so those who work with the econometric, they generally uh, make this uh, graph. Of course, there are other tools for checking outlier also. Okay, and when we run a regression, regression, and so after running a regression, of course we uh, we check for the outlier also at a one step. So, so, so for that, there's a different commands, but we can also check outliers in your data. Okay. Sometimes it's, an, it's a very natural uh, and outlier is a part of the data. Sometimes it comes uh, uh, due to uh, mistake made by data entry operator um, at a certain stage. Okay, so if outlier in that case we consider that outlier as a internal external outlier. That means that has come by mistake. But 
if the outlier is a part of the data set, okay, then dealing with uh, that outlier uh, become difficult. If that is the external, then of course, you do not have much options, okay. Uh, either you can drop that outlier value or we can substitute uh, that value with, uh, with some other value. But if that outlier is a part of the data set, then it really hard even to drop that outlier or substitute that value and that outlier and that value, that value is basically a stream value, that extreme value will be any other value because that is a part of the data set. Okay, because if you delete, if you drop that, that, that means you are losing a, a particular of uh, information, okay, which might be a very important information. Okay, that's why even you can't drop. Okay, certain cases we drop. Okay, because uh, when we work with the cross sectional data, generally we drop. Okay, so probably when we go through articles and a research article, uh, you find mentioning that authors dropped. 5% of extreme of your extremes and top and 5% of below observation. So those are both are considered as extreme observation. So top five and bottom 5% observation generally research are delayed because outlier coming from there only. Okay. So deletion of the outlier is uh, basically uh, okay when we work with the cross-sectional data. But when you work with the time series data or any other type of data, again, the deletion become very uh, difficult. And when you delete, that like when in, in an article, delete certain number of observations, like as I said, keep top 5% and bottom 5%, then you require to mention about that also. We can't just go ahead without mentioning those information. Okay. So, uh, so, uh, so box plot, as I was telling you, also provide you uh, a provide information about the extreme data point, basically extreme data point. So look here, uh, for making a, a box plot, again, we use the ggplot package and we, first we assign data and then we map. So mapping, uh, not using here geo, uh, probably the, later I have geom also, but uh, this way again, data mpg, then I map the data. So x is coming here by the class and y, by HWI variable and plus, oh, sorry, using geom here, geom box plots, okay? So it's hardly matter if you, even if you click this one out from here and make a part of uh, geom, uh, geom, that's work well. This also work well. So, but look here, this one is our box plot. So interpretation becomes uh, important, okay? So uh, as we know, this, this in dark line is basically the median line and bottom and top edge, okay? Basically the 25% and 75% quartile, 75% quartile value, okay? And the dot that you are uh, getting up uh, on top and uh, bottom in, in some of the box plot. So at the first second box plot, there are three dots, okay? Which lies outside this graph, okay? So, that so we may consider this as a outlier. So the, of course the first dot which which are which is on the top definitely is outlier in here. We also consider these two. Okay, so you may draw if you are working with the cross sectional data, you may draw. Okay, similarly with this dot. So this dot basically this dot mainly <coughs> again mm, indicating uh, uh, that. Okay, this data point might uh, uh, and consider as a outlier. Of course, we can't consider all extreme white as outlier again, you remember. Okay. Uh, so if you get time to read outlier, so I I advise you to read some someone outlier. So there is a leverage and uh, terms there. So high leverage, low leverage. Okay. So uh, uh, influential, non-influential. So uh, we consider a particular data point as an outlier only when when we are having a highly high leverage and uh, in and that uh, and influential. So if that data point having a both character, 
it extreme data point and also having a influence influences on your outcome then we consider sometimes you do not have any influence even of the extreme data point okay particularly when we run the regression so at that time you do not consider that as a part of the outlier so so, so. and I, again i'm telling uh, i though i suggested you to drop observations but again that does not work always because if you drop up some out uh, some extreme uh, data point that might uh, any uh, some other data point become a extreme point in a new data set so so, so removing outlier might generate a new outlier so so, so it, that's why i tell you it's a very difficult to uh, any with dropping outlier not always work if keep generating a substantial outlier in the data data file, and then of course we can't go ahead with uh, that uh, solutions. So this one is the uh, we can say the box plots. Uh, so as I told you, this uh, in a box, the dark line, one is basically the median line. So fifty percent of the observations lies below and fifty above. Okay. And uh, in the box, other two lines, okay, Ex uh, other vertical, other two vertical lines. So, so the bottom vertical line is 25% quartile, and the uh, top vertical line one is sorry, top horizontal line, so not vertical line, horizontal line, bottom horizontal line one is 25% quartile value, and what top one is the 75%. And we expect all our data set fall within the within this one. Okay, uh, and this one is the another way for making a graph. So here I just uh, change the axis. Uh, sorry, I flipped the uh, box plot. So earlier it uh, I also changed the axis. Of course, axis change then it it becomes flipped. So so, so this one. Okay, and the reference reading I suggested you uh, uh, three reference reading here. Okay, so uh, the one is uh, uh, a book by Wickham and uh, Gorleo Mund and Wickham. So R for data science. So I I found this book is very important book. Even I learned R from this book only. So I give uh, my learning of R to this book only. So R for data science. Even I advise you to go through this book when we start uh, learning R, and then uh, you may take a help of Princeton University. So there you find a lot of material on R, Stata, SPSS, SAS. So if you find a lots of good material there, so you can use that one also. And the second book um, I generally recommend that one is the book on R programming. Okay, so. Uh, we can understand the, this book only when, when we have gone through the first book, at, at least so some initial chapter of first book. So I advise you to start with the first book and to buy this book in a hard copy so that every time when you have any doubt, we can refer. This book is also available in a uh, uh, soft copy, uh, free soft copy, or, or it's an online version of the book is also available. You can use that and that also, but I advise people particularly who, on those who are serious learner to use book and a hard a book in a hard copy instead of using book in a soft copy. So book on R program is again a good book uh, for learning R. So, uh, so go through this book. Okay. okay. So I'm not an expert on R. Okay. Even I'm learning R. So, so these are the some essential reading. After the there is one more book that we call Advanced R, again by Wickham. So, so we can refer that book also, but of course after referring the, this essential book R. So these are the three reference reading. Okay. So I'm. I'm uh, going to stop. Uh.
here. When I have next lecture with you, which one is the second lecture? In that lecture, uh, we work on some more tables. Uh, we can import external data set. Okay. Uh, you, and then we also work how to save a data set into uh, Excel or save our results in Excel we because several times we make we make tables and we require that table in an Excel format. Okay, so we learn that one. We learn mer merging how to merge two uh, data files uh, because when many times different informations uh, are available in a different data file. So we we select some variable and we bring uh, some variable belonging to different data file and bring those variable to a single data file. So that we learn uh, in our next lecture. Mm -hmm. We also calculate some more statistics. So, so that we'll uh, do in the next lecture. So, so if you have any doubt, then please let me know. I'm going to stop sharing the screen where how I stop. Just a minute. Say no. Yeah, say here. Yeah. So any doubt? Okay, let me stop recording also.